In this section, we're going to talk about how to import data and how to assess data quality. Specifically, in this section, we're going to talk about how to read data into Modeler. Once the data is into Modeler, we're going to have to talk about how to make sure that your fields have the correct level of measurement and they have the appropriate roles. And then finally, we're going to use the data audit node so that we can assess data quality. In this video, we're going to talk about how to read data into Modeler. Specifically, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the structure that the data needs to be in so that it's read correctly by Modeler. Once we've done that, we'll talk about the different ways in which you can import data into Modeler. And then finally, we're going to go through an example of how to bring in data into Modeler using the Verify All Source node. This figure depicts the typical data structure used in Modeler. In general, Modeler uses a data structure where the rows of a table represent cases and the columns of a table represent variables. In this figure, we see that each row represents a person and each column represents a demographic characteristic of that individual. For example, in the first row, we have the data for the person labeled ID 1001. We see that this person is 73 years old, is a high school graduate, and so on. When the data is in this format, it's very important that each row in a file have the same unit of analysis. For example, in a file where each record or row of data represents a unique employee, then the employee is a unit of analysis. In another file, each row may represent a department. In this case, the department is the unit of analysis. If a project requirement is to merge these two files together, then you might need to aggregate the employee information so that each row represents a department. Modeler can read data from a variety of different data file formats. If you take a look at the sources palette, you will see that Modeler can read data from any one of the data import nodes. So it could be from text files, from databases, from IBM SPSS statistics or Cognos, from SAS or Excel, and so on. In fact, unlike programs like Microsoft Excel or IBM SPSS statistics, where you can manually enter in the data into the program, in Modeler, you must read the data into the software from an external file. In this video, the focus will be on reading data from files that are free field text files, which are a common file type. In this example, we're going to show how to read data into Modeler. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to the sources palette, and here are all my different source nodes, and these are the nodes that allow me to bring data into Modeler. So what I'm going to do in this example is I'm going to bring in data from a free field text format. So to do that, I'm going to choose the Verify All Source node, and I'm going to click on that node and drag it and drop it onto the canvas. Now, the next thing I need to do is I need to link up this node to my data set. So in order to do that, I'm going to right click on the Verify All Source node. I'll click on Edit, and that allows me to edit this node so I can link it up to the appropriate data set. Now I need to specify where that data is located. So what I'll do here is I'll click on the triple dots next to the file box, and I'm just going to navigate over to wherever my data is located. And here I'm just moving over to where my data is. I've selected my data now. It's called this demographic data set. I'll click on open. And now I've linked up my data to the source node. Now this file tab here just gives me different options in terms of how the data is set up so that I could specify it to Modeler and that way the data is read appropriately. Now here I have a little preview of what the data looks like. Notice that in the first row I have the names of my variables and then my data starts after that. Here in terms of one of the options, read field names from the file, that assumes that the variable names are in the very first row of the data. So that's happened to be my situation, so that's the way my data is coming in. Also because this is a delimited text file, I have to specify my delimiters. Now the default is that we have a comma delimited file and that's exactly what we happen to have here. You know, oftentimes that may not be the case and you'd have to go and choose the appropriate delimiter. Other things I just wanna point out here, things that uh, pop up often. Times I find that you have to strip lead and trail spaces. In this case, I know I don't have to. One thing you, I might do is I probably, if this was somebody else's data and I was looking at it for the first time, I would probably just bring it in this way then I'd take a closer look at the data to see if my data is actually being read correctly. And then if it wasn't, I probably would go here and choose this option to strip lead and trail spaces because oftentimes there are these extra spaces in there that we don't really need and that uh, oftentimes can really disrupt the way the data is being read. Again, there are a lot of other options that are available here. If you need any help looking up in terms of what any of these options do, you can always, again, 
click on context help, and then that'll explain what each one of these options will do. But again, most often the defaults will work uh, most of the time. But uh, again, if there is a problem, generally the strip stripping lead and trail spaces is going to really fix the issue. Now, assuming everything is set up correctly here, the next thing I'd wanna do is I'd wanna go over to my data tab. And here, this is how the names of every one of my variables, the names seem appropriate. Again, if there was a problem reading the data, the names would probably seem a little unusual right now. This is how each one of those variables is stored. If I needed to change the storage for any one of those variables, I could. For example, let's say this ID variable was not really an integer. I can click on override, I can click on storage, and then I can choose the appropriate format for that variable. In this case, it does happen to be an integer, and so I'm just gonna leave it as is. I'm going to deselect override because again, this is the data is read correctly in this case. The next thing I might wanna do is I wanna go over to the filter tab. And here again, I have all of my data. And what the filter tab really does is it really controls two things. It controls which fields come into this source node, and also it controls the names of the fields. So notice that there are two field columns. The field column on the left controls or shows you what the name of the variables are as they come into this node. The field column on the right shows you what these fields are going to be called as the fields leave this node. If I wanted to change the name of any one of these fields, I could. So for example, for the field ID, I can just click on that cell and I'm going to call this field ID number. And so I've changed the name of that field now. Likewise, if I didn't want to use some of these variables downstream, I don't have to. Notice that there's this filter column. Every one of these fields right now is coming in and it's going to come out. But let's say I didn't want to use the field age. I can just click on that X. And now that's filtering out that field. In fact, I get a little recap up here that tells me 26 fields came in, one field is going to be filtered out, one field is going to be renamed, and 25 fields are actually going to come out. Now, if I change my mind, let's say I did want to keep the field age, I could just click on that red X, and now that field is going to allow, be allowed to come in. Notice that I'm no longer filtering out any fields. Other options that I have, I can click on this funnel looking icon, and here are a lot of different options that are available within the filter menu. And notice I can remove all fields, include all of the fields with duplicate names and the, or rename them, etc. One thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to choose this option, use input field names. And that basically changes the names for all of my fields to back to what they were called initially in case I had made a mistake. So notice that ID number is now going to be called just ID again. I also could have clicked on this field box here for the field ID and then just deleted the, the number portion of it. So again, I'm not making any changes here. I'm just going to click on the Types tab very quickly. The Types tab, we're going to talk about this in the next video. It is the most important tab within a source node because it really controls how all the metadata is set up. And again, we'll talk about this in more detail in the next video. But right now, we're just going to skip that. And I'm just going to click on the Annotations tab. The Annotations tab really allows you to rename any node if you'd like. So the default is that it's going to be given an automatic name, which is really going to be the name of the file that you're using in this case. You could also customize it to something else. You can also add in some keywords. You can add in some descriptions. You know, you can add in, you know, whatever kind of text you'd like here. I'm just going to click OK. Notice that my source node has changed its name now. So it's called demographic video because that is the name of this file. And now if I wanted to view the data to see if it looks OK, I can go down to the output palette. Notice that my source node is connected to, or selected right now. And so I'm just going to double click on the table node and that'll connect those two nodes for me. Now what I wanna do is I wanna run this table so I can actually see the data. In order to do that, I can just right click on the table node and then I can just click on run. This opens up this table for me. Notice that the table has a name, it has 26 fields and it has almost 50,000 records and now I can see my data. So again, I generally would end up taking some time to take a look at the data to make sure that it makes sense and nothing seems unusual, and also making sure that the data is read correctly. In this case, it does look like the data was read correctly, so I'm just going to click OK. Now I've closed my table. Now, did I delete that table? No, I didn't actually delete that table. In fact, if I want to reopen that table, I can. In order to do that, I can go over to my manager section. And right now I only have this current stream open. If I had multiple streams, I would be able to see them here. But I'm going to click on the output tab and notice that there is one table there. It's a table that we had previously created. 
So if I wanted to open that table up again, I can simply just double click on that table and there it goes. It will open right back up for me. If I wanted to delete this table, I could click on this red X here and that would delete it. Or the black X is just going to actually just close the table again. I'll close it out again. So again, that's an example of how to bring in data into Modeler. Uh, you would typically read in your data. And then if you wanted to view that data, you would use a table node so that you can view the results and again, get a little more familiar with the data that you have.